Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. I am holding you up before your food, but uh, I want to go over a couple of things, but some tie-ins. Uh, earlier, uh, listening to Heather speak, um, love talking about mushrooms. For those of you who don't know, I believe we live under the world's largest microorganism, which yields us some of the best water. That's why the breweries, wineries are here. Our food system's awesome, and I love educating people about food. So a couple of things um, that we have. This is a uh, um, keeping in true faith of Portland. So one concept we have um, is urban farmer. Uh, the other concept is called departure. And we do a lot of uh, collaboration with other folks, but we also educate. I think one of the biggest things about food is food transparency and not really understanding where our food comes from. And food is personal, so we don't necessarily tell people how to eat or what to eat. I just feel like showing people different avenues to grow food is very important. Uh, one of our ecosystems uh, that we kind of built out this is a fun little infographic we did uh, earlier this year for Earth Day, but we talked about some of the things that we do in the building to try to do our part. I mean, we don't do everything perfect. We make mistakes all the time, but we just try to offer uh, people opportunities to see what you can do and how not to waste food so, and how to grow food, what else to, how to use bees. Uh, some fun collaborations, I think maybe about four or five years ago, uh, I met, um, so I moved here about six years ago, and uh, I think my first year in, I was able to meet Shashi, who was an earlier presenter. And we kind of had this idea of how do we educate people about uh, food uh, as, as far as like a cow, but using a cow as an example. So what we did is we kind of, we 3D printed a cow, it's called Crow Cow, and I'll, there is actually a company now called Crow Cow to Seattle that actually raise some capital and they're actually doing uh, beef share. But we, uh, along with Shashi and several other people from the 3D printing community, we printed this cow and we gave a presentation, uh, I believe with, it was like in between Uber and the mayor about four years ago at OMSI. It was kind of interesting. We were like these, these interesting people with this big 3D printed life-size cow talking. Uh, I think we got like two or three minutes, but uh, it was a fun project. And what we did is we just kind of talked about what a cow is, what a cow does, how it relates to 3D printing, and then what a cow actually gives for uh, for restaurant use. I mean, just use case scenario. During the time, we've also been done a lot of other things with 3D printing. We 3D printed like coffee grounds, so we did like a Turkish coffee that the kanji means departure, so that we 3D printed like a Turkish coffee. We've done ice cubes. Um, I did not. I, I consulted with my friends from the NBA, and that is not licensed, by the way. That's um, that. There's a lot of problems with NBA sponsorship, so that's just something we did ourselves. Um, you need people to help and you need to teach people and kids. So I think here's a collaboration of our rooftop garden. We've got, um, uh, I think, 10 different planter boxes, five beehives, a lot of fun, wonderful staff. There's myself and some of the chefs and some kids at local schools teaching kids how to grow food. Um, now we're gonna get into some interesting stuff. Here's a kind of a, some space in the hotel that kind of this vision when I first moved here and actually is uh, coming together. But we created a lab where we have food grown three different ways. And it's hard to see, but there's infographics. On the left-hand side, you'll see aquaponics. In the middle, you'll see hydroponics. On the right, you'll see aeroponics. And one of the teams I mentor over at PSU, it's called Next Garden. They have their unit here. So if, if you were to see the movie The Martian, it's kind of like how you would do food in space. A lot of people are doing it. Um, that's kind of what we're working on there. Then we also have some 3D printers. We have a Glowforge printer. So it's a little bit like a lot of information in there, but we keep it open source for all of our staff. Or we do tours all the time. It's definitely a word of mouth thing. I mean, people come to Urban Farmer Departure because of the brands, not necessarily the garden we have down below. Um, so here, here's where I started like getting really excited when I first moved to Oregon. It was like some of the problems we have. So right now, we need to produce 70% more food uh, for an additional 2.3 billion people by 2050. Uh, we're maxing out land area. Deforestation, desertification are major issues. While GMOs hold the answer to commodities at scale, the Netherlands, um, they've become the number two exporter of food, flour, medicine, using 25,000 acres under glass in a very tiny land area. Anyone know that? I learned a couple years ago just amazing things that they're doing out there. Um, so through some collaboration and uh, just meeting some interesting people over the years, I, I think one of the solutions is you know, using you know, better design with AI you know, creates an intelligent overlay that scientists and workers can benefit from. 
an augmented operating system that gives them the superpowers to explore and optimize their surroundings. Uh, less hours per day, more innovation, faster breeding times seven to, the, uh, seven to 10 years for tomatoes, for five to six years for potatoes. Seed companies want to speed up the process with machine learning uh, so that we can now combat new challenges that will arise with a growing population and climate volatility. So uh, several years ago, I kind of got looped in with a gentleman named Caleb Harper, who is un unbelievable. He just got written up, I think, on Friday in the Irish Times about um, kind of distill this information I'm giving on, on how food production is really changing. He's been on, I think, 60 Minutes twice in the past uh, month and a half. So that's a lab that's in Middleton, Massachusetts. So it's an old physics accelerator. And he, he left Cambridge and moved to Middleton and kind of built the lab out there. And, they're growing uh, perennials. So the picture on the right, that's cotton. So they partner with Wellspun, largest in, uh, cotton company of India, to grow cotton indoors. And now this is some stuff I'm really excited about and I think is really relative to today's conversation. This is a company uh, named, it's called Huxley.io. They're out of the Netherlands. And a lot of this stuff here is more, it's, this is a picture of cannabis food growing, but it's, it really is augmented reality and showing people live pictures of uh, when food's grown, the pH, phenotyping, uh, all kinds of information. Uh, but it really, it, you know, they're the first to develop the world's first augmented operating system in just the beginning. So they are doing a lot of uh, really provocative stuff in the food space. Um, is the teleprompter keeping up with me? I'm speaking fast, sorry. Um, next slide. Another what they do, plant vision. So this is a FLIR camera. I think that's my FLIR piece, but they're using just really any, what they can do is like Uberization um, of farming. So what would take years, like 70 years, using arable land with using AI, you can, everyone could be a, a hyper farmer in like a 50 minute crash course. Uh, some other stuff, I don't know if you, anyone's seen this, Iron Ox. They're in the Bay Area, got a lot of funding. Uh, recently they just, kind of launched this. So this is a um, robot using all AI, just growing, picking um, the food. So kind of monocropping. Um, here's another company, FarmBot. This is fun. I think some of us in here have played around with this. We have this. Uh, it was at my office. Now it's off campus. Now it's at a high school. It's at the uh, Crest program for Westland, Wilsonville High Schools. The kids are using it to help. We, we were trying to hack it a little bit. So it's not over uh, arable land, but over a aeroponic growing system to, and then we were working with the extruder to figure out the compost so we can kind of bring the worm tea back into the, into the compost. Um, and then this is last slide. So this is um, with light. So using um, LED lighting, you know, you, you could change the, the seed. So the same genetic as seed, changing the spectrum of light, you can actually start changing the nutrient density of the food, which is really, really fascinating. So essentially like taking a tomato and growing an organic tomato, same seed, but increasing the vitamin C content by about 10 times and be able to feed people around the world who don't have access to all this stuff aside from just commodity crops. And then that's just a little picture of like a fantasy land. I have a 13,000 square feet below the hotel that we started kind of building out like a clean room. I think I've borrowed some of Shashi's help from Intel, and uh, we're trying to grow this thing out in our uh, below the basement. That's my uh, kind of operation, and then we have some food out there for you. Thank you very much.